Hey guys, welcome back to the Python Text RPG tutorial. I got my setup changed a little bit. Hopefully I sound a little less awkward in this. And let's dive right back into setting up the Python game. So we set up the title screen already and I showed you how to probably navigate it in command line and get Python and Sublime installed. So now we can actually start making the content of the game. Right now we're gonna try to set up stuff like player name, uh, map, and navigating, stuff like that. And we'll get into interactivity and actually prompting the players for their name, maybe their class, health, mana, whatever we wanna add to customizability. And then we can actually play the game from that point. I'm gonna show you a super basic skeleton and how to do this. The sky's the limit to how big and how detailed you wanna make your game. So we have uh, above here, we have name. HP, MP, status effects, and we actually need to also add a location. Location will be a string basically that we store, and that's where the player is at the time. So if you move uh, north, south, up, down, whatever, we wanna update that location so that the game knows where you're actually moving and doesn't think you're just in the same place that you started at. So if that location for now, let's make it a starting zone. Or for simplicity, we'll just call it start. By the way, throughout this video, you should save your progress incrementally. On Mac, that's Command S. Windows, it's Control S. Just save in case uh, Sublime or anything crashes. You don't want to lose your progress because losing code is super frustrating. Let's start getting into actually how to set up the map of the game. So when I did this, I did a super convoluted Tesseract Hypercube type feeling map for my project. We're just going to go with a clean classic like top-down 2D style game. Let's uh, define this as game functionality. And below it, let's make a thing for map. Probably a good way to help people visualize this would to actually make a visual map in comments. So let's make, you know, a decent sized map. One, two, three, four. Let's do a four by four for now. Basically, this is what our map will look like. We'll just call these places. Let's make a legend. A1, A2, dot, dot, dot. And then going down will be something like a A4, B4, dot, dot, dot. So this is how we'll navigate in the map rather than using uh, names like you might use castle or walkway one or route 34, but let's just use a, a1, a2, a3, stuff like that. So that's what our map will basically be like. Um, let's have the player starts at B2. That way they have a little bit of room to wiggle around. So we want to make this map in code though, right? Writing a comment doesn't just make the map. This is just a nice visualization for ourselves. So we want to have um, a description of the each zone, some extra information, maybe if the part of the map has been fully explored or solved, um, and then directions that you're able to navigate because not every part of the map should be able to traverse. You know, on corners, you don't want the player to be able to kind of walk off the edge or an off by one issue. So. Let's set up some uh, constant variables, these are called. Write them in all caps for clarity, if you want. I, I think that's a good way to do it. So we'll have a description. This is a description of the zone. We'll have a examination. This is what will be said when the person examines it. So let's put description equals description. Information equals info. And these strings are what the person will type to see this yeah uh, solved is false these are boolean values true and false make sure to capitalize the first letter in python and then let's have a up up comma north so this will let the person either type up or north to navigate in this direction and we'll have one for all four directions All right, so now that we have our basic constant variable set up, this is what's going to help us navigate the map and see if we've solved this part of the map or examined it or whatever you want it to be. Let's say it's a puzzle. Solved can mean has the puzzle been solved in this place, yes or no. We can cause different things to trigger later on. So we're just kind of setting this up for success right now. So for solved places, um, 
let's say we have uh, 16 zones is quite a lot. So, you know, let's set up uh, four of them for now. A1, false. So in this form, this is basically a key value dictionary is what it would be called. So this is super common in code and super useful in video games. These brackets in Python designate that it's a dictionary. The string a1 is the key for the value false. So that means if we ask for solved places dot a1, it will return to us false, saying that the value of a1 being solved is false. So we're going to do this for all of our locations. We can copy paste this to speed this up if we like. Legibility sake, we'll actually drop this bracket down to there and we'll copy this line that we have here and do it for all of these guys. Now, uh, here's a trick we can do in Python. If you select by holding down command on Mac or control on Windows, all of these things, you see that we have four cursors popped up. So rather than typing A, 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 or B, 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 B all over again, we'll just select all of them like that and press B and it changes all of their values at the same time. This is useful when you do a thing called refactoring code, which is renaming stuff in like a function or something specifically. And there we have kind of our solved grid system set up for this purpose. Uh, I think a grid system is actually a pretty easy way to go for a lot of games. Uh, you could use more descriptive names if you want, but that also can just be set in description or something else. Ooh, that's a good idea. Let's add a name. Zone name. There we go. So now that we have our dictionary of the solved places, we will need a dictionary of all of the zones in our map. So let's have map. Or, sorry, map is a function in Python. So when text looks like this, different color and sublime, map means you're actually calling a function. So we have to call it zone map. And let's make another dictionary. And let's go with A1. And within A1, now we're actually going to make another dictionary inside it to store all of, all, all of our values. So this dictionary inside a dictionary trick is super useful for making kind of these nested storage things, like a local database on your own computer. So we'll do that for all of them. We'll have A1, and A1 will have a zone name. Don't forget the commas after them. It will have a description, examine it. It will basically have everything that we have here that was set up as a constant. And we need to do this because it will change depending on the zone you're in, right? So we don't want every zone to be telling you the same exact information. So this makes every zone unique and navigatable. So now that we have that, don't forget a comma closing this first part and we'll copy it. And theoretically, you will need to do this uh, 16 times, right, for all of the things that we've made. In our case, we don't feel like doing that, so we're just going to do a few of them. So let's do uh, A1, A2, B1. We said our player will start in B2, right? So let's say um, zone name for B2 is home. We can modify stuff that will then be printed to say, like, uh, oops, let's change those to single quotes. This is your home. And examine. So if the player types examine, what extra detail do we want to reveal to the player? Like, you know, it's your home. But let's say your home looks the same. Is your home solved? There's nothing to solve, false. And now what we want to do here is up, down, left, right will become the zone to whatever direction of it. We're gonna use this to navigate the zones. So let's reference our map. From B2, what is above it? A2. So we're gonna change this value to A2. What's below B2? C2. 
it's to the left of b2, b1, and so forth. And now, if you look at this current state right now, see how these don't have commas? That won't compile, so eventually those will need commas, but um, we aren't going to use those for that case. All right, so let's see. Give me a moment while I just, I'll come up with random names for these zones so that I'll have something kind of nice to demo to you guys in the end of these videos. Let's make a, the entire top row, let's make it a town. So this is basically an example of how you can set up this zone in this naming scheme. A description, I'll let you guys fill in all of this yourself. Uh, for the sake of the tutorial, we'll speed it up. And now directions, you'll have to unfortunately set this manually for all the directions. There's fancier code to kind of try to auto map these things. But for the sake of you guys, I just want to make this like a nice, clean, easy thing to do without any weird math or grid hopping or algorithms or stuff like that. All right, so now we have our map set up. Welcome back, guys. Sorry for that delay. This is basically setting up the core gameplay and the map functionality for the player to be able to navigate. And we'll be handling navigation in the next part with interactivity. And I'll see you then.